Thank you, Sami, um, for coming to our Digitizing Europe Summit, and thank you for answering a few questions. My first question would be, um, there has been lots of criticism also today that Europe thinks too much, that Europe has too many concerns, acts too slow. You are a member of the EU high-level group on AI. What is your opinion? How do you respond to this criticism? Well, I mean, <clears throat> I think that um, such a critical discourse is extremely important. So it's not that I am uh, voting for, uh, let's go without uh, having this discourse, because this technology change we're seeing now is indeed a fundamental transformation and uh, is at very high pace, right? And uh, by this I don't necessarily mean the, the basic scientific um, progress. This is uh, usually lots of years and decades of hard work. But I really see that lots of the things that have been developed over the last decades in, in the labs and, and technology um, centers around the world are now reaching our real world, right? And, and I think this is really something that has to be discussed in, in a modern society. We are a democratic um, uh, kind of ecosystem of European uh, countries that have to find and uh, also get into the right direction, this, this discussion obviously. But I think it's it's important to do it. Having said that, I also believe that at the same time the discussion doesn't have to be in the sense of what we don't want, but rather what is it that we do want and how can we achieve our goals. Hopefully being at the forefront of technology, hopefully being at the forefront of science, I truly believe that our wealth is, is based on scientific and technological discoveries, on our curiosity and um, being drivers, right, in, in the last over the last centuries, and at the same time we have to be really responsible. And um, I think it's it's kind of very nicely put into the, the the label of trustworthiness in a way, right? So how can we be very forward uh, directed in terms of technology and, and science, but at the same time be the responsible scientist uh, and also ecosystems, including industry, policy, um, society as its, uh, as its whole, to really kind of uh, get the whole um, technological developments in the right direction. So I'm actually happy that we have a discourse, because if we wouldn't have that, that would not be Europe, I guess. Ethical standards, values, um, these are the aspects that are always at the core of the debate. Um, does this play a role at, at um, your university as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I think this is actually at uh, TUM, it's really at the core of, of uh, read the university's gene, if you want to call it that way. So it's really that what we do is drive forward science and technology with having the human in the center of, of everything, right? So what is it that we want to, to change? How does it affect society being in exchange with the social sciences, with philosophers really also understand how do we drive technology such that it goes in the direction we want as a society in general. And uh, finally, obviously, also educating the leaders of tomorrow, being minded in a way that they don't only, they are not only cutting edge uh, technologists and leaders in the field, but they're aware of what is it that this technology can do. and be responsible about that decision, consciously. If we look into another direction, um, Alice has just underlined the need of joint cross-country um, cooperation in regards to, to uh, investments and research. Mm. Um, in your opinion, what should be the focus of a European AI strategy? Well, I mean, I would argue that we should build on the strength we have. So it is well known in the community that um, science and technology and also the, the next generation startups are really strong in Europe. This is due to the fact that on European level, as national level as well in Germany for example, there has been tremendous investments um, and they obviously have to continue, but now we need to face also the transition into the real world and we need to embrace that because this is a chance for Europe as a continent, for Germany as a, as a country in really kind of being on the sustainable side of technology and really getting to the next level of what is nowadays being called artificial intelligence, meaning basically using machine learning, deep learning techniques to do large-scale data analytics and using this in all very uh, varieties of applications is only a first phase of the phase of artificial intelligence, if you want to call it that way. The next generation will really be about um, kind of having humans and machines being in the same workspaces, being in, in everyday lives and really interacting on everyday premises 
And I think this is really exactly where the potential and the chance for Europe lies, because this is where we are strong. We are very strong in uniting engineering and computer science towards something new, a new discipline, if you want to uh, call it that way. And this is really where I believe there's still the, the future to be determined. It's just about now that the kind of competition has started. And um, let's see what the next 10, 15 years happens. But I really think this is the focus that is building on the strength we have anyways already. Mm -hmm. Um, the tech divide study that has been quoted today several times um, has revealed that uh, especially Europeans feel um, very concerned about AI. And you have um, shown in, in your speech that there is or should be interaction between um, robotics and, and humans in the future. Um, do you think that research industries but also um, academics have underestimated um, how to build trust with people um, and how you can actually build a relationship between robotics and humans? <clears throat> well, I'm not sure it has been underestimated. I think actually it has always been been already kind of uh, a concern of the entire community. We have always been fighting for really establishing uh, a relationship and showing that the science and technology we're driving forward is really for the benefit of mankind. And this is really something that is very special to Europe. If you look around, around the globe, I don't see this exactly being the center of science and technology in the other parts of the world. I really see this as the, the very fundamental core of European science. And this is a very precious thing we should highly value. And this actually leads to the discussions we are having now. And it leads actually to something that I would rather see instead of being it suppressed in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, I also truly believe that um, the right measures are being taken. People take it very serious. Um, and I think what, what people really fear in a way is being kind of uh, governed by technology, by machines, by whatever you want to call it. And I think we have to very clearly make the point and show to people, not via science fiction debates, but be, via real life technology. What is it that people can benefit from? How do they benefit? And we have to consciously choose what are the problems we want to solve. Let it be the future of work, making really <clears throat> inhumane work obsolete in Europe. I think this should be absolutely uh, our goal. We should enable um, really the right treatment in terms of medical treatment to everybody. It's about a democratization that we can finally embed. So technology is the solution, not the hurdle in the problems that we have in society. But it's up to humans and us as a society to really determine exactly what we need to do in order to, to make this happen in a way. And um, yeah, this is a process and this is just how democracy works, right? I mean, I don't see this as a problem of our uh, society. It's, it's deeply embedded in the core values of our society. So not fight it, go there, talk to the people, let them understand how this works, get their feedback and co-evolve together. Mm -hmm. You have been uh, very optimistic about Europeans' future, if I understood you correctly. If you have one wish for, uh, the, for Europe and its future, what would it be? Well, I really hope that the vision that I'm having in mind for Europe and that many others have also in mind for Europe, because we are European citizens, we want that this uh, desire and optimistic future will also become reality. Um, so I really hope that the right uh, decisions are being taken and that the right investments are being done and uh, that we really kind of take care that um, we have the right people, we, we have the right mindset, we have the right markets, we have the right scientific background, really, that we, we need all these ingredients and really be strategic about that. And um, I wouldn't call it too optimistic. I think we have to be optimistic because otherwise, why would we choose this path, right? If this is not a possibly rewarding path for, for our entire society. So I would really wish for Europe that we are kind of aware of all these diverse strengths. So our diversity is our largest strength, I would say. At the same time, people argue that maybe this is, uh, this is uh, something that, that is in our way. But I've really been growing up in a divided Germany with a multinational background and seeing how this entire continent unites and really gets as strong as it is today. And I really think we need a very positive vision of the future because this is really worth to be fighting for. And science is at the core of it because we are um, kind of paving the future in a certain way and educating the, the, the next generation of leaders. So if we are not positive and proactive, then 
I don't think this is the right place to live in. Thank you so much. We should end it with that, um, with these words. Uh, thank you for your time, and I hope you will have uh, a very nice conference at the end of the day. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.